guys, so we're back here in the hangar of the Sabre Wing at Azalea Aircraft. And in front of me is the man himself, Bill. And he's going to give us a quick tour of the operation here so you guys can learn a little bit more about what they do here and uh, also about the Sabre Wing aircraft. Well, welcome to, uh, this is the, our maintenance hangar uh, here at Cook County Airport uh, for Azalea Aviation. We do a lot of different things here. Um, so you have to kind of follow along. In this building here, we do maintenance on certified aircraft, experimentals, we do our testing. Um, offices over here to the, uh, on this side of the, uh, of the building have a flight simulator, a flight instructor, so we can do some transition training. It's part of a flight school from Middle Georgia that oh, wow. helps us and they do their own thing as well. Um, Today, or right now, what we're working on, of course, we're doing some testing on our turbo engine and prop on our Sabre Wing. But then we're also putting a, a Spider engine, 120 horse, into this Zenith Cruiser. That was nice. So it's getting our firewall forward. Plus, we're doing all the transition training and test flying of the airplane. Um, then there's also a dynamometer where we do all our engine run-ups and testing. So when we build an engine, we test run it on that. Because our interest is, isn't only just our Sabre Wing products, it's the pilot. We right. want a, a qualified pilot. And so sometimes that means getting them up to speed. So, so thank you. So we will uh, go next door real quick to the big hangar and we'll show you what goes on there. Okay, awesome. All right. I just follow you. All right. Well, the purple and Sabre Wing, if you look at our logo, comes from the Hummingbird, yeah. which is from Central America. And if you oh. Google it, you'll see that little purple Hummingbird, and that's where we got the name from. That's so nice. So here is the standard Corvair 100 horsepower Corvair. Corvair. So I may not even be pronouncing it right, but it's basically, it's an auto... Auto engine converted yeah, the, to... The, the Chevy Corvair was from 1960 to 1969 when they built those cars. There were two and a half million cars built. Oh, wow. And then lots of engines. So, uh, that was the only mass-produced, air-cooled American vehicle ever. So, uh, that's where we get our engines from. Awesome. So, this room is mostly our offices, uh, okay. restrooms, if you need them. Um, we got some pictures on the walls, of course. Um, of our Sabre Wing, and then where this all kind of started, over in that corner you see uh, our mm -hmm. KR2 that was on the cover of Sport Aviation, and then our uh, Tailwind, in which we're both um, Corvair powered. Okay, okay um, we were talking about Corvairs, there's a Corvair right there. So that's, oh, that's what a, the car looked like that's a back in the day. Um, we own three Corvairs that we got, and um, that's just one. Where did you get the idea to use a Corvair engine? Well, they've been using Corvairs in, in airplanes since 1960. Oh, wow. So it's, there's been thousands of Corvair-powered aircraft. Can a, wow. can a builder add the car to? Yeah. Because um, <laughs> this is a the, nice we car. We help at getting cars for people who have, uh, Are you serious? Well. Yeah, how, how much more would, 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 would it be with the car? You can get a car for about 10 grand. Oh, no so. way. This is a beautiful classic. Hey, babe, sell your Mercedes. Uh, I think we need a garage for that. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. it's just fun because it pulls the story all together. Sure does. Right. Now, this, what we're building here is our LSA version of the Sabre Wing. So oh, I see. It has the, the tricycle landing gear. gear. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we've kept all the components, uh, building it light, but it's, it's, still, it's still as tough as mine. Oh yeah. But we're not adding big wing tanks, we're adding just a smaller wing tank. Got it, have don't some limitations, wing. okay. This one's only 100 horsepower. So right now we're just about done. Um, we're working on the wiring and the interior. The wings are mostly completed. Oh wow, I like that um, interior. What so, is the plane actually made out of? What it's all this? made out of fiberglass, wow. except for the spars. All, the, all your spars, and here I'll just show you. This comes right off right now. Wow. So that's what the inside structure looks like. Let's get a closer look there. So you got your gear attached and then your walkway area where it's reinforced, flap controls, uh, 
landing lights, ventilation systems, all right there. Awesome. And then um, as soon as we're, we're done, we think we're done, then this will get glued on. But this is what a typical piece comes. It comes pre-molded like that from us. Huh. And it all just, and the, just like, a, like your model airplane. Right. And yeah. the, the beautiful thing is, you know, a builder gets eye hands on on all of this. You know, they know how their airplane is built. I do notice that I could be wrong, but these seats seem a little higher up or it's just me. Or maybe because it's the the, the tricycle. The, 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 the tricycle sitting up higher than right. on our, than on ours. Okay, okay. Um, that's my gear on mine is just shorter because um, I wanted it that way. Oh, okay. <laughs> but the gear that you get typically with the aircraft is a little bit longer. Okay. All so right. this, this will be set up VFR and for training. We'll use this for transition training and teaching okay. people. Okay. Let me get a sh quick shot of this. And how long have you guys been working on this one? Uh, it's been a couple of years just because mm -hmm. we don't put as much time on it like we should mm -hmm. and we're actually using it for training. Yeah. Uh, we have two of our employees that they've built the majority of it oh. and I'm working them through so they're learning it. Um, awesome. The reason is that we've got a customer, this building is going to turn into a customer build assist center. Nice. So not only do we want to help people build airplanes, but I have to teach my crew to know how to help. Exactly. Right. So they're using this as their stepping stone to the learning. Right. Our first customer build comes next week. Okay. Now over here, um, you can see a lot of the parts that we've been building. So um, some of the kit parts are up on the shelves, cowlings, canopies, um, rudder skins, elevator skins. So. Uh, as an example, like here's one of your elevator skins. Comes all pre-made. They're all vacuum infused, which is a whole interesting process. Okay. But we have molds for all that. On our, on our engines, we use um, plenums for cooling, and we can make them out of carbon. That's made out of a one mold. Cool. We can make that. Um, that's awesome. So that's been a lot of our time and effort has been into. Okay. Being able to mold all the pieces and parts. Now, for a typical builder or someone who's already, you know, they've built their airplane, it's flying already, uh, you know, when they need to do maintenance or parts or whatever, they just come directly. Yeah, they can come to, to us. But the nice thing on the Corvair is a lot of those parts you can get from Napa, uh, AutoZone, a bunch wow. of different places. So you're not totally dependent on me. That that's the beautiful thing about experiments. So you don't you don't have to go. Directly to one company. Is, like you can buy all your pistons and cylinders brand new for our engine for about twelve hundred dollars. Wow. Whereas that's like one cylinder for a, a Continental. So. That's awesome. Um, I can't see upstairs, but upstairs <laughs> we've got three fuselage boats and all that. We're just starting. Okay. Is that a Zenith? That's, a that's the Zodiac. With our engine and our cowling, and. Um, we did a lot of repairs and put our engine firewall forward on it, but right now the airplane's being torn down for a paint job. So we're stripping uh, all the old paint off. And um, but it, it's flyable. It's a it flies really nice, but it just looked ugly. So um, no, we're working on it. So the good thing about the Corvair engine is that you can you can fit it on on, on a mul whole variety of aircraft. multiple multiple and we have firewall forward kits so like anything you needed forward of the firewall uh -huh. we have for certain aircraft like especially zenith kr or our own so or sonics we have the motor mounts the cowlings prop okay. spinner engine electrical oh, wow. everything you need okay this spider engine is a 100 horsepower engine um, okay this one's been flying actually for quite a while. This engine first flew on our prototype, the one you just flew in, um, when we first built the airplane. And then it flew on Larry's Sabre Wing for about a year. And then he changed his engine out to a Lycoming, and now we oh, put it he? on this. So now this is the third Sabre Wing that this engine will start on. It'll probably stay on this one because this airplane will stay at 100 horsepower. Okay. Um, but it is a Corvair conversion. Um, we have one of our biggest things that we do to develop the engine is having our front bearing, which is a Chevy 350 main bearing. 
and it supports all the prop loads. Um, and, oh, I see, okay. And takes a lot of the stresses off of the engine that a prop um, sends to it. Okay. Um, it has a 32 amp uh, Harley Davidson rear alternator system. Very simple. No belts, no brackets. It's just. Okay. We try to keep it as simple as possible. Yeah, I mean, we just flew in the, the turbo, the 120 horsepower, and that thing was smooth as butter. You know, on the climb out and cruise, it was, it was very nice. Now, in terms of, uh, first of all, safety, because again, as I was asking you earlier, one of the concerns for, you know, builders or just pilot population in general, an auto engine being used for flying, so what do you what do you say to anyone who is a critic or who doesn't feel as you know comfortable with a, with the auto engine or conversion? Well, auto engines are were designed for running under a certain type of load in a car, and they do really well at that. An airplane has very different loads, so a lot of times you do get into trouble when you're now trying to combine two different things. Um, a lot of auto engine conversions have to have gear reductions for the propeller, but gear reductions can be very problematic. Sometimes the engines do great, but the gear reduction units fail like crazy. Okay. So we kind of stepped back and said, how can I make this engine think it was always an airplane engine? So we went back to looking at an aircraft engine like a Continental O200, and saying what makes this such a success and then can we make this air engine basically the same thing and so that's why we've kept it direct drive no gear reductions and then we've simplified it as much as possible kind of the theory of you know the kiss system keep it simple stupid You're right <laughs> or if you don't have it it won't break so we will never lose an alternator belt because we don't have one um, so anytime you can do that that helps one of the biggest safety uh, factors on it is having six cylinders. Um, it runs so smooth that if you drop a cylinder for any kind of reason, it still runs smooth enough that you can fly around, you can climb, you, you have power. It gives you that, that, that safety factor you're looking for. On a four-cylinder engine like Homing or Continental, if you lose a cylinder, you typically have to shut the engine down. Okay. So it's, it's a big difference in comfort level there. Okay. Now, obviously, the most attractive thing about a Corvair or other auto conversion is the cost. So can you tell us a little bit about what the, the price point is for this particular engine and perhaps other engines that you have uh, in the works? Now, we, we sell the 100-horse engine finished for right around $10,000. Um, the 120 horse is about twelve to thirteen thousand uh, dollars. You can build it for yourself a lot cheaper than that. Um, my very first Corvair engine I built, I built for less than fifteen hundred bucks. <laughs> but I also have a skill set that other right. people don't yeah. have and other things. So um, there are some, you know, if you want to be, play the experimental game and do it, you can have at it and do it fairly inexpensively compared to other engines.